I, um, I, don't, I don't even know how to express what I want to say today. I'm kind of at a loss for words tonight. And, uh, but I want to say this. It has been one of the most encouraging, insightful, refreshing two weeks of my life. Yes. And I have truly enjoyed it. How many can, how many can say that? How about Wednesday night crowd like this? You know? Uh, it's been sustained every single night. And I thank God for your faithfulness. I, I, I thank God every day that he's allowed me to pastor such great people. I am, I am blessed above, and not, not, I don't want to use the word above, I am so blessed to pastor a church that I love to be here. I've talked to so many pastors, they, they, just, they, they just struggle and they, they, they hate where they're at and, and they hate the people they got to preach to. <laughs> and, uh, they, they, and I guess they feel hated by the people they preach to. I don't know what's going on but I just feel so loved and appreciated in your kindness even today. We love you so much. And, and, and your support of this meeting has just been such an embracing and encouraging uh, thing for Kathy and I. And we truly appreciate it. But I want you tonight. The Bible said, give honor where honor is due. Amen. And I don't think that I can say enough words to say how much I personally appreciate but I want you to join me in giving a round of applause. And I know when he's done, when you're done clapping for him, he's going to tell you to clap for the Lord. And I'm going to say yes, amen. But it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to brag on one of God's kids. Amen. It doesn't hurt to, to, to encourage and to let the man of God know that we really appreciate him coming. I want you to come, brother. Valley, and I want you to preach to some of the greatest people in the world, but I want you to give him a warm hand as he comes. Would you go ahead? Stand your feet and just receive the man of the Lord.
I don't tell everybody that because I'll be lying. Some churches I go to, I want to head, get out of Dodge as soon as I could. Man. You are some of the finest people. And I will say, Pastor, you have the best group of seniors I have ministered to. Amen. And the end, you will talk about the young people because they my dogs. Woo! Woo! Somebody say bye bye. But I'm ready to preach. Lord God, I'm ready to preach. We're ready to hear it. We're ready to hear it. Bobby, dude, you have won me over to Southern Gospel Day. No, 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 no. It ain't a joke, folks. Because I don't like Southern. That's the last night. But God, God's given you a gift. Bobby, the next six months of your life are going to be the most powerful months of your life. Doors you think that have been shut are going to open up. And out of this ministry, greatness is going to come out of you. Vanessa, you too. Amen. Leo, some of you are, I'm telling you. chapter 6, and I'm going to read until uh, verse 8. 1 to 8, my friend, Wes, who has done a brilliant job this week. Brilliant. You know, sound engineers, 95% of them are temperamental. Of the 95%, 90% of them are some temper, but most mental. <laughs> but that man, it's good. I, I wish I could take some of your DNA and clone some of them other. Oh. Are you ready? I'm telling you, it's going to be hot and heavy and filled with revelation. Revelation tonight. You, you feel revelation. All right? Okay, are you ready? Read with me. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Look at me. You will never have a vision of God until visions of other things die. Amen. God will not be rivaled by inferior allegiances. In other words, you don't take God and your trash and put it on the same level. Trash. <laughs> How many of you know we all have some mess? Yeah. Yeah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting, sitting upon a throne. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm going to have a throne room experience tonight. Oh, no, 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 no. That wasn't good enough for me. <laughs> tell somebody, I'm going to have a throne room experience tonight. All right. And he's what? He's high end. And he's praying. He fills the temple. Somebody say high and lift it up. Somebody say high and lift it up. I want you to know tonight you're going to see him high and lift it up in Victorville and in Turning Point. For that, there's a reason because the only thing that can tear down high stuff in your life is higher. So if God is the highest, then other things that have risen up can come down. Next, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun tonight. I'm gonna have fun. Read. Above it stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face. 
twain he covered his feet and with twain he did fly. That's a whole series of messages there that I can't touch tonight. It's a huge revelation. Next. One cried unto another. So these are the seraphim crying one to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Angels are looking at earth and saying it's full of his glory. Next. Read. And the post of the door moved and the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke. Next. Then said I, woe is me, I'm undone. Because I'm a man of unclean lips, I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the glory of the King of God. No, what? I'm a man of what? <laughs> and there I what? So before he saw people, he saw himself. It's a big problem in church life. People always see other people, but they never see themselves. It's all, the problem is always with somebody else. Somebody hurt me. Someone will leave church. Right? Well, has anybody ever hurt you on the job? Why don't you leave the job? Honey, <laughs> honey. Very true. <laughs> when, when, when this man saw the glory of God, the first thing he saw was himself, then he saw other people. Now, 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 look, look next verse, astonishing. Read. Then flew one of the seraphim, he having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken from the tongs, with the tongs from off the altar. Now, that, that's an Old Testament because there was a, a tongue that would take the meat out of the fire. And all these things I can't get into. It was very accurate Old Testament stuff. Next. Ray. He laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this is a treasure lips. By iniquity is taken away. And I said, How many of you want some fire from the altar in heaven to touch your heart and your life and your lips and your mouth and your situation? Would you wake your hands and say, Amen? Amen. It's going to happen tonight. You watch and see. It's going to happen tonight. Next verse. Read. I heard the voice of the Lord say, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And then I said, Here am I. Send me. Father, Amen. we are very, very thankful for Pastor and his family today. Yes. We do remember him and his family and yes. pray today that yes, yes. you would comfort them. Yes. Help them. Yes. We thank you for the people that are here. But more than all, we thank you for sending your son Jesus yes. and then for sending the Holy Spirit. Yes. Do take us to your high place, Father. Yes. Yes. Somebody say amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 6 is a look into God's throne room. See, the problem in church life is some people get held and trapped by stuff that is inferior to the throne room and they live segments of their lives bound by inferior stuff when all they need to see is the throne room. Yeah. Yeah. Holy God, can somebody give the Lord a shout of hallelujah? May I tell you something today? Everything that is around you or in you or upon you that is inferior to God is coming down tonight in the name of Jesus because we are about to have a throne room experience in the presence of Almighty God in turning point. Somebody shout throne room experience. How many of you want a throne room experience tonight? Would you wave your hands and say amen? Or do you want an inferior power? To put your mind and put your life and put your family in bondage where you can't feel right, you can't look right, you can't think right, you can't operate right. Because inferior allegiances have grabbed a hold of you, you just have never seen the throne. Yeah. And you become comfortable in that inferior, pathetic lifestyle. So, here's the man. He, 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 he is looking into the throne room. He sees the seraphim. You have the cherubim, the seraphim, the 24 elders, the four living creatures. You have the archangel, and then you have the fighting angel. The seraphim are the closest to the throne. Then he sees the service at the throne. Then he sees the fire in the throne. Then he sees the cleansing. 
in the throne. Then he gets a revelation from heaven. And after that, he gets a commission to go. And then the coal of fire is put on his lips and his life is changed by the power of Almighty God. And before all that happens, he has to settle the issue of King Uzziah. Some of you all want the fire, you want the cleansing, you want the glory, you want the presence, you want the call of God, you want all of that. But before, sir, ma'am, you have the blessing of God and the breakthrough of God and the throne room blessing of God. You have to deal with a fellow called King Uzziah because the Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died, this man, Isaiah, saw the Lord high and lifted up because in every life here tonight, there are two kings. The Bible says, let not sin therefore... The only thing that reigns is a, a monarch or a king. So right here tonight in this place, there are two kings that are trying to occupy your throne. One is a king called Uzziah. Now Uzziah is interesting because he, he, there's another word in the Bible that is a reflection of Uzziah. It's called Uzzah. Remember the word Uzzah? Remember where Uzzah came from? Uzzah was the one that touched the and died next to the thing created to give him life. There were a bunch of church people next to the thing created to give them life and they're dying. I know you didn't hear what I just said. They are good people sitting in the house of God that are next to the miracle, next to the throne room, next to the blessing, next to the breakthrough, and they are dying. Because Uzziah, the word Uzziah means the strength of a man. Uzziah is sitting on the throne. So right now, there's a revelation. My Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost on me. Right now, there is a revelation of the throne room and a revelation of heaven. The Bible calls it glory. Getting ready to touch somebody's life. There's a revelation of heaven that's about to bust up the earthiness of your life. There's a revelation of glory ready to bust up the mess in your life. There's a revelation of throne room experience that's ready to give you a breakout in your life. There's a revelation of upper room that's about to dynamite your basement living. I wish I had somebody to shout hallelujah. The only thing that will take care of your basement is the upper room. Yeah. 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 We have become so comfortable with Uzziah sitting on the throne with the flesh and the attitude and the addictions and the habits. Yes, and yes. the inferior emotion yes. and the reverse mental patterns. Yes. Huh? But today I want to identify something. Yes. I want to instruct Uzziah, you are about to die. Yes. Yes. Can I say that one more time? Yes. I want to instruct Uzziah, your time of life in my life has come to an end. The strength of a man, the strength of the world, you that have wanted to rule my life and rule my heart and rule my emotions, you that have made me bow to inferiority, you that have made me bow to bondage, you that have made me bow to the things that I never wanted to bow to, tonight I tell you that I pronounce your death. In the year the king is that Isaiah saw the Lord. I am now, let me tell you why, why there are rival allegiances or false kings or call them what you want that erupt in your life. Let me tell you why. Because from the moment you see the Lord, I am everything below that is no longer a threat to you.
Christ. You know, some people come to church and they, they know a lot. That's called stupidity. Yes. Let me explain why. Let me explain why. I have a teaspoon of knowledge and God has an ocean. Yes. And you know a lot? You know nothing. <laughs> the, 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 yes. Everybody listen, young people, if you give me half, I won't preach long today, unless you tell me go ahead. Young people, tell them please shut up. <laughs> The reason why you've had such battle with such inferior things, and you know it's wrong. The reason why you've had a battle with allegiances in your life that you never wanted to bow to, but you ended up bowing to, is because the enemy understands that if you begin to see the Lord high and lifted up, there is no depression, there is no dysfunction, there is no attack, there is no principality, there is no power, there is no enemy, there is no accumulation of habit, there is no vice, there is no stronghold, there is no You will see the Lord high and lifted up, and then you will see the Lord. I wish I had a shout in my can I, can I tell you something today? What you are facing is below Jesus. And if tonight you can pronounce the death on that user, do you know what servants of God in this church? Not, I mean, people that are, are lovely people have come to my table and told me. They've told me for years some things have been in their life they have not been able to get rid of and they've been loosed by the power of God. Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? You are right! Am I right? Am I right? I, I, oh. oh Lord. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what's about to happen? The devil is about to have a Maalox moment. <laughs> Because some of you have been ruled, dominated, hurt, intimidated, pushed back by inferior things. Yeah. Tonight, that Uzziah dies, and somebody in this ministry, and somebody in this church, is going to see the Lord high and lifted up. And when you see him high and lifted up, no inferior allegiance, no inferior emotion, no inferior mental pattern, no inferior power, no inferior dysfunction, no inferior relationship will ever have the power to dominate your life again because seeing him high and lifted up and drop some revelation on you. Uh, uh, Wes, will you go back to Isaiah 6? I'm about to drop some stuff on you that's supernatural. I want somebody that would say, Sherlock, there's a Uzziah that's tried to make me do things I don't want to do. There's a Uzziah that's tried to make me bow, that's tried to make me suffer, that's tried to make me go in a, a, as, as an elevator, that's tried to make me go in a cycle, that's tried to bless me, that's tried to bind me. But today, I said, notice to that Uzziah, there's a bigger king in town. There's a great God in town. And Uzziah, you are going to die today in the name of Jesus. And I am going to...
kill the what? So first you had a throne, yeah. right? right? And then you had the... But the only time the throne responds is when the temple speaks. The throne never responds without the voice coming from the... Do we have some voices coming from the temple? Going up to the throne tonight. Somebody give him some shots of hallelujah. I want 25 rowdy people to stand up and, and give some shouts to the, to the throne.
Oh, oh. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O oh, begins. Lift up your head, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory The temple lifts his head and the king comes in. Because the temple activates the throne. How many of you need a throne room blessing tonight? I, folks, I want you to hear me. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I feel God here. Look. So, some precious, and you know what? I, I am honored that you are here tonight. <laughs> the worst church man is better than the best sinner. Mm -hmm. I'm honored that you are here tonight. But I came to tell you, there is a throne above this temple. There is a king that's greater than Uzziah. And he is high and lifted up. And he's higher than your challenge, and higher than your problem, and higher than your pain, and higher than your attitude, and higher than your past, and higher than your struggle. And right now in this ministry tonight, what the enemy has done in 10 years in somebody's life is about to be dynamited and torpedoed by the power of the Almighty God. And it's about to happen in one moment when the throne comes into the temple. Can I get somebody to give the Lord a shout? Darling, God's about to do something supernatural in you tonight. I promise you. How long? How long? How long? Honey, how long? Well, this at lunch today, I was told that the other gentleman's struggle started at two. And what happened in this meeting? I have been completely set free. How long was yours? 50 some years. 50 some years? Can I tell you something today? Right now, in the name of Jesus, thus saith the Lord, when the throne comes to the temple, after the temple has made a step to the throne, when the throne, when the glory comes into the house, miracles happen in moments that have uh, 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 that have been sent from God that deals with your stuff that have oppressed and your stuff that has robbed you and your stuff that has raped you on the inside and hurt your life I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit to tell somebody today there's a king in the house a bigger than desire and there's someone high and lifted up and everything beneath you can I, can I do something right now may I I have to. Because it's king versus king and throne and temple. And you're in the temple tonight. That means the throne is on its way. And if God can do it for that lady and this gentleman and I don't know how many more young people here. How many of you young people you've been drastically touched by the Lord this week? Would you wave your hands? Look at this. Look at that. Sherlock, the Uzziah that has tried to rob me, take away from me everything that is meaningful, has tried to extract from my life purpose, have made my mental patterns defunct and my emotions dysfunctional. Tonight, 
are going to be summarily broken by the power of Almighty God because if God can do it for her and God can do it for him and God can do it for about 50 other people in the church tonight, then God can do it in you right now. You know why? Because you are making a step towards the throne. is one step towards the throne and the throne comes. He is high and he's lifted up. I want somebody in the position lock. I need that kind of touch in my life now. Yes. No. Praise you. No. Praise you. I need that help. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. I want you just to come and stand on my left and stand on my right. I just need you. I, I just need some people because I feel the anointing of the Lord saying that no king, no rival allegiance, no power that's had a hold of your mind and of your heart will ever have a hold of you again like that. You are going to be free. Come on, make a step. There's one thing you can do. You can make one step. Do what you can. God will do what you can. I want to say it again. If you do what you can, God will do what you can. Come here. Come here. Face me. Face me. Yeah, thank you. Can I say it again? See, you and your family are doing what you can. Honey. I bless you. I'm going to talk to you today. I, I bless you today. And you, I bless you today. I bless you today. Come close to me. Would you, would you come close to me? I promise I don't mind. Listen, I promise you today that father is reaching out to you as a father to a child. He's taking his mighty hands and wrapping it around your lonely, isolated life. And tonight, as you praise him and as you magnify his name, a miracle, a loosening, a blessing, a release. Can you believe these kids have only been married for a week and they've been in church three times in the last six days? Once it's a hamburger. <laughs> I, I, I want everyone that's here to know because you've taken one step. Ma'am? My sister. Is, is, is this your family here? Any, your daughter? You have a daughter? My God, they look like twins. <laughs> right? I want you to know that that child is about to be touched by the Almighty God. Oh, let, me tell you, let me tell you, it's been a battle for her mentally and emotionally. For her to walk up here, mm, it took a yes. lot. Honey, I understand. I, I, I felt it and I knew it. But because you took one, yes. honey, because you took one step to God, He's going to take a billion steps yes. to God. Yes. Just because He does. Not because He deserves it. Just because He loves you. I feel tonight the mighty hand of God wrapping around you. Let me tell you what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to look at this young lady. You, she's crying black, green, yellow, white, and <laughs> honey, the miracle has begun in your life. I want you to do something with me. And everybody doesn't do it the same way, but I'd just like you, if you would, to let the throne room of God know that you are activating the temple. In other words, there is no emotion. Listen, there is no power. There is no failure. There is nothing in your past that will stop you from just lifting a hand or giving him a hallelujah. Would you do that today? Father, here they are. Here they are. These are precious people, Father. Some of them have come here and they, uh, uh, the enemy has tried to surround them and bind them and hurt them. But look what the Lord is doing in their lives, Father. I pray tonight. I pray for loosening. I pray for blessing. I pray for miracles. I pray for outpouring. I pray for transformations in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Father, I'm believing you for a loosening. I'm believing you for a release. Somebody say a release. A release. In my life. In my life. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, it's gone. I'm telling you. It's gone. It's released by the power of the Almighty God. It's gone. It is. Because it's gone. Father, they are precious people standing here today that I believe that you are going to use. They are missionaries here, they are yes. evangelists here, they yes. are teachers here. Yes. They are people that are going to be transformed and called by you, Father. Loose them and let them go. Yes, Lord. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Be seated for a moment. Be seated for a moment, please. Be seated. Look, I've got to
to go ahead. Uh, look, folks, you have to allow me to obey the Lord, okay? Yeah, okay. I, I, is that okay with you? Yes. Amen. The Bible says his train fills the temple. Everybody say this. Say the quality, the quality of my life, my life is decided, is decided by, who by who I allow to occupy my throne. Who occupies my throne fills my temple. Would you say that one more time? The quality of my life, or the lack of quality, is decided by who I allow to occupy my throne. And who occupies my throne, then fills my life. Your life and what fills it, it's a consequence of occupation. Tonight, I declare prophetically to lives that occupation has changed. Can I say one more time? No whopper stopper, commuter, computer, curry, flurry. Big shot preacher is going to lay hands on you and bring the blessings of God. What you are going to do is remove one king and put another king. The king of kings will occupy your throne and your life will be filled. Your temple will be filled. Your life will be surrounded. Somebody shout it. You gotta let me preach tonight. I'm in a pre I'm, I'm in a preaching mood tonight. I feel like a preaching fool tonight. Amen. Yeah, yeah. You said a big amen when I said I'm a fool. When you are trapped by earth, by problems, by what is around you, when Uzziah is alive, you never see him as king and you never have the throne. I want to show you something. The Bible says that when Uzziah died, he saw the Lord hand it up, his train filled the temple. Watch this. And the post, and you can hear that. What? Uzziah died. He saw the Lord, and the post of the door moved. Watch. Somebody say post. Post. What is this? Post. post. What is this? Door. door. What did I just do? Open the door. What happened to the post? Stay, Stay good. Stay. Stay in place. Because it cannot be. So when glory fills your life, what can't be moved is moved. Can I, can I declare prophetically over somebody's life? The enemy has told you there's a situation in your life that will never change. The enemy told you there's an obstacle in your way that will never be moved. The enemy told you you'd never get to where God has ordained you. The enemy told you your tomorrow will be a repetition of your yesterday. The enemy told you there'll be failure in your tomorrow because there was failure in your yesterday. But when the occupation on your throne is changed and Uzziah dies and God comes and the glory comes into your life. Things that cannot be moved are moved by the power of Almighty God. Can I, can I tell you what I hear from the Lord today? It's moving me. Can I say it again? You better look at somebody and tell them it's moving me. Say, it shall be moved. I am moving. No longer dominated by yesterday. Tell them the post. Say the post. That the devil told me. Would never move. Look. 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 It's moving. Somebody shout, it's moving. I declare 
Honey, they be crying. Weep. That's good. It's moving. That's why you're weeping. That's why you're crying. It can't stand in your way. It can't prohibit you. It doesn't have the power because the occupation has changed. somebody that's here and you would say Sherlock that's what the enemies told me that this situation won't move because that's the way I've been well, let me tell you something huh huh let me tell you something Israel was scattered and dead for 2,000 years and in one day God raised them up what the devil did in 2,000 years God undid it in one day, one day. <laughs> So I'm here to let you know, it doesn't matter how long, it doesn't matter who did it, it doesn't matter how wrong you were, it doesn't matter how much drugs you took, it doesn't matter what happened in your life. I'm here to let you know when God's glory comes into the house because the temple begins to praise Him, post a move of the power of Almighty God. I hear, I hear clearly, I hear clearly tonight. You weep all you want, baby. That's all right. The posts are moving. Yo, don't. The posts are moving. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. Huh? Yes. Huh? <laughs> the post are moving. Amen. Yeah. Baby. Yes. Son. Yes. Honey. Yes. Ma'am. Yes. It's moving. Yes. Ma'am. Yes. Honey. It's moving. Yes. 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 Amen. 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 I, want, I want somebody today that was in Sherlock tonight. The last night of this week, not the last time of the move. No. It's a sustained move. Yes. I, 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 I'm going to show you a miracle revelation in a minute. You will be astonished. I, when I came to this church the first time, God showed me a place where His glory appears. I didn't ask Him. And I'm going to show you where it is. And if you get there, your life will never be the same. I'll show you. I want somebody that would say, Sherlock, I believe tonight Sherlock. that it's moving. I want somebody that would say, I believe that with all of my heart. Yes. This is what I want you to do. I want you to stand up in a moment. Then I want you to wave your hands to the Lord. And I want you to shout to Him, glory to God. Lord, it's moving. What are you going to shout to the Lord? Glory, glory, to, God. God. glory, glory to God. Lord, it's moving. One, two, three. Glory to God. Would you shout it one more time? Glory to God. The pulse is moving. Shout it one more time. Please be seated. I'm going to show you something that's going to shock you. It's going to shock you. Please listen to me. My life was busted, beaten, broken, attacked, assaulted as a teenager. As a 17 year, 16 year old, I was completely dysfunctional, hated God, rebelled against parents, father, lived a, a, a really not good life. And in one moment, God turned it around and said, I have need of you. But 
have nothing to offer you, Lord. But I have everything to offer you. I'm a nobody, but I'm a somebody. Uh, but Lord, no son, I have need of you. I took a step. And in seven months I was preaching to 3,000 people. Seven months. I'm one of the only students in the history of Southern Bible College that preached his way through college. Joe Clark wanted to know how come I would be in the same church as he went to. Because he was the Prince of Preachers at that time. And I was an emerging nobody. But my post. So, so I, I, I want to show you something that's going to shock you tonight. I am saying that God showed me a place in this ministry where he's going to meet with people on a sustained basis. My friend Wes, would you please go to Exodus chapter 25? And I gave you, uh, I want to add something. If you can go to verse 8 and 9. 8 and 9. And then verse 17 to 22, please, Wes. 8 and 9 and 17 to 22. Let read that. Stop. Can you imagine that? God is saying, if you make it, I'll dwell in it. But look what he said. Next verse. But you have to make it according to the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of the instruments. Therefore, shall you make it. In other words, if you want me to dwell, build it according to my pattern, not yours. See, a lot of Christians want to be blessed on their terms. They want the healing without the healer. They want the deliverance without the deliverer. They want the privilege without the responsibility. That you build it to pattern. Amen. And I want to show you, I, I want to show you prophetically the turning point is being built according to pattern. Yeah. I want to show you. Are you ready? Yeah. Verse 17. Watch. Get ready for a miracle here tonight. Yeah. You. I want you to come in a moment. And Vanessa, I want you to come in a moment. Okay? Ma'am, what's your name? Who? Cindy. I'll remember. Read that, please. Thou shalt make the mercy seat of pure gold, two cubits and a half the length, and a cubit and a half the breadth. Talking about the ark of the covenant. Next. You shall make two cherubims of gold of what? Every, of beaten wood. Everybody look at me. Some of the greatest creations of God in you comes from your beatings. Yes. Yes. Mm. How many of you feel beat up sometimes? Amen. God is only shaping your cherubim. Yes. Yes. By the way, cherubims are the guardian angels of the holiness of God. Yes. I wish I had time to talk about that. <laughs> Cherubim guarded the garden and stood at each side of the body of yes. the Lord. Yes. Oh God, I was oh. Thou shalt make them in the two ends. Which means that God will govern the both sides of your life by protective power. Yes. Every end is guaranteed. Next. <coughs> Next. Read. Make one cherub on the one end and the other cherub on the other end of the mercy. So shall you make the cherubims on the two ends thereof. Next. The cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high. Now, everybody look at me. I was just in Jerusalem a few months ago, and I was in the Temple Institute. On my trips to Israel, we get personal attention from the key men of Israel that other groups don't get because I represent 17 members of the Israeli parliament in 20 countries. So I have some connections. <laughs> All right? The cherubim shall stretch forth their wings on high, covering them with the seat with their wings. Read with me. But their faces will look one to another, but they will look towards the mercy seat, shall the faces of the cherubim be. Remember that, okay? Next verse. Watch. 
you shall put the mercy seat above the ark, and the ark you shall in the ark you put the testimony that I shall give you. That is why wherever the presence of God is, there must be a testimony. How do we know God has met with us in this meeting? Because there are scores of testimonies. Next verse. Read. And there. Stop. Say that. Say that. I will meet. How many of you want God to meet with you on a perpetual basis? Would you yes. wait and say amen? amen? In your low times, in your high times, in your struggle, in your victory, in your weakness, in your strength, in your discouragement, in your encouragement, in your times of purpose, or in your times of problem, how many of you want to have a place where God can meet with you? Would you wave your hands and shout hallelujah? Now watch me. And then I will what? No, commune. How many of you are ready for God to commune with you? Meeting is initial. Communion is perpetual. Yes. Yes. From between the two cherubim which are upon the ark, Vanessa, come here and stand and face me. Cindy, come here and stand and face Vanessa. God is saying to his people, now the word ark is the word aron in the Hebrew. The word aron means the chest of God or the heart of God, technically the throne of God. As long as Israel had the ark, they could not be defeated because the ark represented the throne of God on the earth. And when the throne is there, then you see him high and lifted up. So no inferior thing can defeat you. So God said, I will meet with you. I will meet with you. One place between the wings of the cherub. church 
to have a perpetual move of His glory. And there is a place in this church that God showed me that He will meet with people and commune with them. you of everything that is holy, powerful, purposeful in your life. Chew you up, spit you out, and then mock you. Or tonight, let the Almighty God occupy your throne and move that post. I, I can really tell you, I have faults. But ain't got no post in my way right now, boy. Ain't got no post in my way right now. I got to ask somebody. Now, remember, don't complain about devils when you sleep with them. Don't talk about the atmosphere of your life when you decide what king sits on your throne. You have to make a decision now. So I want to appeal to a young woman and a young man and a mother and a father today. And I want you to get right before you get left. Because contrary to public opinion, God was here before you. So I want to ask you a question. Is there a young man or a young woman or a mother or a father? Is it Sherlock? Tonight I am ready to give my life to the Lord. I don't have much to give him. You don't have to. He's got everything. Amen. Amen. Can, can, can you believe, Sidney? They fly me around the world to preach. They fly me around the world. Wow. Not to India. India, I underwrite everything. But yeah, I go to London, they fly me. I go to Indonesia, they fly me. I go to Singapore, they fly me. Huh? Can you believe that, that they're doing that to this piece of X trash? X trash. I'm not trashing it. X trash. <laughs> Some people still think I'm trash. <laughs> this is around here. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I want to tell you a miracle is about to happen. So, so I'm going to ask a question. I'm going to ask here first, then I'm going to come around. Is there someone here that will say, Sure, I just want to give my life to the Lord. I want to surrender my life to the Lord. I'm not going to leave this right. place with the Lord King sitting on my life, producing robbery and spiritual destruction inside of me. Is there anybody here? Would you take your right hand and just look at and say, pray for me. Huh? Would you do that now? Bless you. Honey, cowards go to hell. Women go to hell. Any coward can say yes to the devil. So I'm going to spend 15 seconds more here, and then I'm going I want to ask you, is there someone? And right where you are, I'm not going to call you forward right here. I want to pray with you. Is there anybody else? Would you take your right hand and lift it? I'm going now. Now remember this, when you say no to God, you say yes to the devil, and you authorize the devil to treat you like a garbage can. Understand that. You cancel your wild oats and pray for crop failure. Okay, I'm going now. Is there anybody else? Would you take your right hand and lift it and say, Sherlock, pray for me. I plead for your soul. Honey, I honor you tonight. I, I have pled for you today before my Lord. Now I can move. Is there anybody here? Would you please, sir? Thank you. Sir, I honor you tonight. Is there anybody else? Please, sir, I honor you. Ma'am, I honor you tonight. Is there anybody? Ma'am, I honor you tonight. Son, I honor you tonight. I'm coming over here. Oh, they're ready. <laughs> They may wait till I come there. So, is there, please, please, bless you, please, please, don't let the enemy keep you in his foul camp one more night. You're worth more than a night with the devil. 
Right. Is there anybody else? I saw the hands. Oh, I honor you, man. I do. So keep your trash, keep your mess, keep your sin. Have hell when you live, have hell when you die. I'm about to move. Anybody? Is there anybody over here? Here they are. Wow. <coughs> You know, you notice that I'm pretty passionate when I have an altar call. You know why? I know where I came from. Yes. And I know where I am today. And I don't know exactly where he's taking me, but it's a good place. Amen. 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 Yes. I mean, girl. <laughs> Every head bowed, every eye If you lifted your hand, would you just stand right where you are? I'm going to pray with you right where you are. Bless you, honey. Please stay. Please don't. Please don't. Please don't go to hell with your eyes open. Please don't. Please don't sell your soul for a moment of flesh. I beg you, do not become a garbage can. All right. Anybody else? There's 15 seconds and this will be over and I'm going to pray with these precious people standing that God will deliver and touch them and heal them and set them free. For those of you that are standing, I want you to pray this prayer with Pastor and I. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your mercy and your grace. I give you my life. I surrender my life to you or I rededicate my life to you. I ask you to wash me in the precious blood of the Lamb. Make me whole. I confess you as my Savior and my Lord. Amen. And Father, I am believing you for miracles, transformations, and breakthroughs. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. 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 There's a special prayer, Pastor, that I feel that the Lord would have me to pray at the end of the meeting in a few moments. A special prayer for you. Look, I want you to do something tonight as the presence of God is here. Would you give a, a good offering to the Lord tonight to help us? Would you do that? You saw the video of what I do. I preached 24 times in 8 days and in one day traveled 10 hours by train and preached. And the bathroom in the train was a hole down into the tracks. 10 hours I didn't go to the bathroom, I guarantee you. <laughs> I did. But our ministry, that's all I have to tell you. God can speak to someone that stashed it to just help us. That's all I have to say. You make your checks to turning point. I want to take this now so I can just minister to you in a moment. Would you do that? Would, would you consider just giving your a precious people and pastor? I would never abuse the privilege you give me to stand behind your pulpit. Ne I will never do it. Never. If God can't tell you what to give, I am powerless. Alright? So I'd like you to prepare your gifts now, if you would. You can make a check to turning point and, and just do it now. Would you? And I'm going to ask the ushers to come forward. How many of you feel the presence of God in the church tonight? Would you say amen? amen. Even when you're taking an offering, the presence of God lingers, right? Yes. That, that's a precious thing, okay? That's a precious thing. So I want you to get ready, please. Uh, I'm thinking I'm going to hold for just uh, one minute for you to write your check. I'm going to hold. Remember, when you go to Macy's, you never take $5 to buy a dress. So don't build your house before you build the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Very simple. So we are just believing the Lord to speak to people that God, and, 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 and it, it, it will be enough. Hallelujah. Somehow God always makes a way. Father, 
there are precious people tonight that have given sacrificially out of their need. They have given to you today. I am honored and humbled to receive their gift for ministry. I pray that you bless them, you touch them, you multiply it, and you make them whole. And would somebody say amen to the Lord? Amen. Please go and receive these gifts tonight. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Lord. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Father. Bless you, Lord. Bless you. Heal your people. Father, I pray tonight, even as they are giving, that your healing virtue and power would flow in them and through them that ligaments and tissue and arteries and veins and uh, 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 connectivity and blood flow is going to to be healed and increase that body inflammation is going to be eliminated and moved by your power that pain in the joints are going to be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Cancer has to be healed. Breathing problems have to be healed. Lung problems have to be healed. Lord! Rejuvenate bodies today. Somebody shout amen to Somebody shout amen to Rejuvenate bodies today. These bodies are the temple of the Lord. Amen. Arthritis. Praise joints. Be healed. Let there be family breakthroughs in this church tonight. For husbands, for wives, for sons, for daughters, for grandchildren. Breakthroughs, I pray. In their lives. Somebody say these young people. These young people. That breakthroughs are going to come through yeah, their lives. You believe God can do that? You believe God can raise up some young people here tonight? Yes. yes. You believe God can raise up some people all around this church tonight? Yes. Yes. Huh? 
Do you believe that? Do you believe it can happen now? Yes. Do you believe God can raise up some men and some women? Yes. Let me tell you, I declare in the name of Jesus that because of what God has pushed people into, there's going to be ministry, there's going to be prayer, and there's going to be more support for these people to see this ministry explode than ever in your life. that God has called you to do something but you have not been able to because you've been cloistered and you have been surrounded and you have been you've been crusted but God has he bust the crust baby <laughs> and that miracles are going to start emerging out of your lives out of your lives because the visions are now becoming one somebody shout becoming one becoming <laughs> somebody say that one more time say becoming one becoming one so that you will move in a realm you've never moved before can somebody say amen? Amen. I want you all to stand with me. I want some of you, I don't know how the church is set up. I, I want some of the elders that are here, head Asha, whoever you are, Bobby, I want you here. I want some of you elders and some of you, Dale, you, uh, some of you people, uh, uh, whoever you are, come here, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Yes. Come on. Bless you. Come, come. Yes. God bless you. Bless you. Yeah. I want all of you to lay hands on these two people right now. All of you lay hands on them. I want everybody in the church pointing your hands towards them. And say, Lord, today I thank you for the precious gift you have given me. It passed Ron. Pastor Kathy, thank you that they have been faithful and they have been through the process and they have not run. Now, like Elijah, comes the moment of prophetic emergence. We declare over their lives blessing, prosperity, anointings, breakthroughs in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it begin in me. And through me. And somebody shout amen. amen. Be seated. Let me say two things to you. I, I, I'm going to tell you something, okay? Let me explain something to you. I am in, I am in fairly good health. I mean... I preach 315 times a year. I travel 185,000 miles by plane. Another 35,000 by car. I'm in pretty good health. Yeah. <laughs> you think a sick man to do that? No. no. I have felt more tired here than any place I've been. I'll tell you why. Virtue. Every night. And I was, every morning I get up and I walk. And I said, Lord, why am I feeling tired? I normally don't feel like that. He said, because things I have put in you have been poured So for the next five days, eat, sleep, Play soccer. Look out here. <laughs> Let me tell you two things today. I, I go to Israel once, twice a year, sometimes more. We take tours to Israel. Our tour is one of the best, if not the best, in the country. Let me tell you why. Uh, uh, because there are things that we do that no other tour does. Extras on my tour. These are extras, okay? We have a three-hour visit to the elite army base in Israel, visiting with colonels and generals and the army. We visit the Knesset, where we are spoken to by some of the most powerful men. We have the head of the Temple Institute, 
who made, who helped to construct the temple utensils that comes to our hotel to speak. I speak prophetically on every side about end time things on every side after the Jewish guide speaks. I thought somebody would have said a good amen to that, but amen. that didn't impress you too well. But it's we have a special ceremony where we lay a wreath at the Holocaust Memorial. My group is the only one that has a nighttime cruise of the Sea of Galilee. Oh. Amen. Amen. Uh, amen. I have a special consecration service in the Garden Tomb. Oh, in the Garden of Gethsemane, where we are given a special place because we pay for it. Uh, I do a special teaching on the Mount of Olives, where I show you seven prophecies that come to pass. Uh, I'm taking 65 people to Israel, and our tour, a pastor I just heard from Trinidad, I have 30 people going. Our tour is filling up. Our tour is filling up. My tour fills up in a month. Six weeks. I don't advertise it. <coughs> it fills up because people know what they get. Now, if there's anybody interested in going, we have our sign-up sheets here. We have the registration form here. If you call me in a month, you may, but I cannot guarantee that the tour will have space. If it does, fine. If it doesn't, you can go. The price is jacked up by about $500 because we have to buy more seats. We have held a block of 65 seats on the aircraft. So if anybody's interested, you can come to the back. On the 21st, I'm speaking more about my stuff than I've done every night. I'm doing a seminar. As most of you know, my strength is end time. A five hour seminar where I'll be teaching about the Feast of the Lord, the Mark of the Beast, to taste, technology, and religious parallels. I'm going to show you the mark of the beast has a religious parallel in a religion in our world. And the middle of letter of their praise is a mark. You'll be astonished. Jerusalem and temple prophecies, the Abrahamic covenant, the road to Armageddon. You, this is now a five hour, it's in Bakersfield on the 21st of um, February. 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 <laughs> uh, we give you a manual, we give you lunch, and it's $50 for uh, the, the, the seminar. A seminar like this, you know, is between 500 and 750 euros. We charge 50. You know why? Because everybody comes. We want everybody to come. We have space, from what I understand, for some more people because we have 150, what'd you say? 155? 160. 160. We have 160 uh, that we can accommodate. So you can do that at the back. Tonight, because it's the last night of the meeting, if you come to my table and get my packages, I'm going to bless you with stuff. Now, everybody that's got stuff on my table, I'll bless you with stuff. Am I right? Yes. Am I right? Yeah. But tonight's going to be special, all right? Pastor, I want to say thank you. It has been a joy to be with you, man. I want you to know that. I, I feel like I have a friend. Amen. Let me tell you. No, 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 no. You don't understand. Preachers have acquaintances. Few friends. Amen. For him to trust me to take an offering behind his pulpit, I'm his friend. And he trusts me. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. You know the kind of guy he is? How many revivals do you all have a year? Huh? Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. He's very, very careful. And I compliment you for that. He called Pastor James Moffat for me. James scheduled me the end of February and he began to weep on the telephone when I began to prophesy into his life. So we're going to have a great meeting and thank you for the connection. Ladies and gentlemen, it was my joy to be with you. Yes. I, I have been honored. Thank you for supporting us and helping us. You come to my table. I want you to understand. Our budget for the year, just to do what we do for India, is six figures. Just to do what we do for India and Israel is six figures. But you know what? God always meets it. Yes. Hallelujah. Intense, Amen. large, and huge in you. Amen. 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 Amen.
we love you here. And uh, we, 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 we thank God for you. You may be seated just for a moment. We want to we thank God for every one who raised your hand, stood to your feet, and asked Jesus to come into your heart. And um, that you've come back night after night faithfully. Amen. I would, I want to share with you that there is a great inherent danger in the church world that when you birth children into the kingdom and don't take care of them, it's called abandonment. And if you're a new child of God, if you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior, and you've accepted Him as the Lord of your life, and you really want to serve Him, you really believe God has changed your life, let me encourage you to be in God's house as often as the doors are open. It will nurture you. It will encourage you. And not only that, but you'll have a family that will pray with you and stand with you and encourage you and strengthen you. And you need to be planted in a church where you have a pastoral covering and you have a church family who will love you and help you and assist you. I'm asking everyone uh, that has accepted the Lord uh, when, and raised your hand and accepted the Lord and have gladly received salvation and Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, heaven is your eternal home. I want you to stand up in the last two weeks. You've, you've made that stand. I want you to stand up tonight. I want you to stand, all of you. Come on, there was more than just for the night. Come on, stand up. Come on, 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 come on. Let me encourage you. You may be seated, but let me encourage you to uh, uh, be back next Sunday morning. Amen. Sunday night. And the services yep. are on Sunday night. And, and be in God's house. If you don't have a Bible, we'll make sure you have one. Amen. If you'll see me right after church, we'll make sure you have a Bible. Let me encourage you to talk to God every day. Amen. All day. Amen. Build a relationship with Jesus Christ. Begin to talk to your Heavenly Father. Praying always in the name of Jesus. Amen. Start a prayer life young. And when you pray, talk to Him. But take time to listen to Him. He will talk to you because my children know my voice. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So I want to encourage you. I, I don't want you to feel abandoned. If you, need, if you need someone to talk to you, if you need someone to pray with you, to assist you in your start in Christ, amen, you can call. Amen? Uh, and, and, and we'll have people who will call you back, people who will pray with you. Every day, Monday through Thursday, there is for those young Christians and those that are beginning their walk, at 11 o'clock, every single day, there is communion and prayer to help you. You can, right in the middle of your lunch time, you can come over here and they'll pray with you and encourage you, assist you and counsel you. Amen? Amen. And for you young Christians or, or people that just want to commune with the Lord in communion, it's every day, Monday through Thursday, from 11 to 1. Amen? Faithfully ministering to your needs. God bless you. I love you so much. Once again, we say, Brother Valley, we thank God for you Amen. and all, and we thank God for all that He's done. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for having me this morning. Hallelujah. Stay with me, if you will. Amen.